I was originally wearing this white shirt, but it kind of looks like sunshine, so no. shooting things on a budget of zero, but that's okay. Anyways, welcome to Extraordinary Times. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jeremy. You will see AJ tomorrow or yesterday. If you, you know, watch the shows, you should. They're awesome. Anyways, first story of today, I kind of want to throw back to uh, Monday when I talked about the presidential debate because, uh, you know, my two cents on it, it was kind of watching both of them just throw around words it wasn't. It, it, they they both had points that they wanted to make, but they were so frustrated at each other that they were just like just throwing words, not really coherent sentences out half the time. It was really kind of sad. But you know, if you if you fact check both of them, they were both getting a lot of crap wrong, and they were just being kind of you know belligerent to each other. And that's actually kind of good to see for me, because I think they were both being a little too polite in the first one, and then Obama kind of stepped it up a little bit in the second one after Joe Biden was, like, peeing all over Ryan. It was just, it was terrible. I was kind of embarrassed for Paul Ryan, actually, just the fact that he was getting stepped on, and he's such a nice guy, and he was getting stepped on by the vice president. But, you know, that's all I really have to say about it. I hope that uh, nobody was too dissuaded from their previous decisions. By the way, go vote. Make a decision. Stick with it. I think I've said that like a dozen times now, but do it. Do it. Do it. Throwing it back a little bit further to the Libya attacks on 9-11, apparently Reuters got a hold of a bunch of emails that were sent directly to the president and, and uh, his people that uh, were time-stamped about an hour and a half, two hours after the uh, attacks began in Benghazi. And, uh, and so uh, they, knew, they knew about the attacks kind of as they were happening still. And, well, we all know that they didn't exactly step up the, the help. Uh, they had people and, and armaments and, and, and uh, things to respond with there, and they did not do it. So, just in case you weren't aware that they were really, really, really incompetent about being attacked, well, that's another reason I want to vote for Romney. He's actually going to, you know... Go after the bad guys, not just the one bad guy, like Obama did. He got that one bad guy, but all the bad guys. Yeah. But in slightly less important political news, Donald Trump, the former, you know, presidential hopeful and, you know, having hair hopeful, I'm with you there, buddy. He came out today with this ultimatum. I'm going to show you just a tiny bit of it right now. President Obama is the least transparent president in the history of this country. I have a deal for the president, a deal that I don't believe he can refuse, and I hope he doesn't. If Barack Obama opens up and gives his college records and applications, and if he gives his passport applications and records, I will give to a charity of his choice, a check immediately for $5 million. But the problem with that ultimatum that he gave is that, well, I don't think the president really wants people to know about his history or anything because, well, you know, the, a, a while ago we talked about Breitbart TV getting a hold of a booklet from a gala that was held back in the early 90s that had, like, Barack Obama's history, and he was born in Kenya, and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and that's the thing, is there's all these different accounts and, 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 you know, the facts, the facts of things. And then there's a speculation and the portrait that he's tried to paint for different situations in different places so that he sounds more interesting to people. And for me, that's exactly what... Barack Obama is all about. He will paint himself to be what he has to be for that day, for that situation, for that office, for whatever he has to do. He, he, you know, he's a chameleon. He will just be what he has to be to, well, not only survive in the 
case of a chameleon, but, you know, to take charge and, and be in charge and whatever. And I just, I don't trust him. I don't think he's an honest person. Uh, I also don't particularly think Donald Trump's an honest person, but I am pretty sure that if Barack Obama does what Donald Trump asks him to do, he will donate that $5 million. And that, you know, that's better than a lot of things that a lot of people have done lately. So go Donald Trump. I think I really have to evaluate my life if I'm praising Donald Trump. In a little bit of nerdy McNerd news, you might have known that the PlayStation's been a really secure system and, and it's it's really solid. And Well, now the master key, as a lot of people call it, for the PlayStation has been leaked online. What that means is that now you can actually hack Sony's precious little Blu-ray player with games. <laughs> So you can do all the OS changes that you want to do. You can, you know, mess with it how you want to mess with it. But you know what? Another thing we beat you to, PlayStation, Xbox has been hacked for a really long time. Gamers forever. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get through it. And kind of a throwback to a long, long time ago when Netflix tried to, like, separate itself and turn into two different entities and, and they, like, hiked up their prices and all that. Well, apparently Netflix's stock is dropping really hard right now because they had promised people at the beginning of the year when they did all that crazy stuff, well, we're still going to have a, a surge in people. We're going to get 7 million new subscribers this year. Well... First off, when they did that all, that whole debacle, we'll call it, they lost 800,000 people in the first, like, you know, week of that whole thing. And then came the recovery of, well, this, this quarter they've added uh, 1.16 million new users, except that brings the total for this year up 3.43 million instead of the 7 million that they promised people at the beginning of the year. So all their investors are like, wait a minute, this isn't what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to get a bunch of new people. So, you know, they're getting upset and starting to move their money elsewhere. So, sorry, Netflix. Not only does the internet not like when you change stuff, your investors don't like when you change stuff when it's stupid. You, you change the, the format of uh, things on Xbox Live. I kind of liked it, so, you know, good job there. I'm going to spoil the moral of this last story with don't ever hitchhike. Ever. Make better friends. Never have to hitchhike. Because this last story out of New Mexico really, really just hurts me inside. Because this man is a paraplegic man. He was he was doing his hitchhiking thing all along the highway there. And uh, some people picked him up and uh, he had some booze with him. And, you know, he refused to share his booze with these people. And they were driving him out to, uh, you know, some kind of abandoned part of a Navajo reservation along the highway. And when he refused to share his alcohol with them, they were like, hey, fine, what? Threw him out of the truck uh, when it was stopped. But they threw him out of the truck and said, uh, good luck, Chuck, and drove off. He was left in the middle of the desert without a wheelchair, food, water, friends, phone. And he, you know, did what any sane person would do. First, he uh, curled up in a ball under a bush so that he would stay warm for the night. And then when sunrise came, he started hobbling along on his butt and legs. And, well, people very rarely travel the road that he was found on. Sadly, a couple of people had passed him, but they, like, honked and, and, and kept driving, like, you know, whatever, dude. And, well, that makes me sad, where as a people that even if we see someone hurt on the side of the road in the middle of an abandoned area, we're more afraid of being jumped by random people that he might be associated with rather than stopping to help. But somebody did eventually stop and help him, <clears throat> like, two days into it. And uh, he, it's, it's, it's ending up okay. He's in a hospital now and he's recovering. But it just, it makes me so sad that, that people would just pass by him. It's very, very uh, good Samaritan. -y. You know, two people pass by and then third one actually stopped and helped him out. So, you know, good, good uh, Bible reference there in real life. <laughs> Anyways, I'm done with all this. Thank you so much for watching The Extraordinary Times. Until next time, I'm Jeremy. You should like over here and subscribe and favorite. I don't know where stuff's, stuff's like moving on YouTube now. I don't really know where it's all going to end up. I'll start pointing in the right directions, kind of like I always do. <laughs>
But until next time, be aware. started, uh, you know. Oh, why does everything have to move right as I'm trying to shoot? Uh, okay, here we go again. You know. <laughs>